In the Trenches with Ryan Roxy. Hello, 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 hello. My name is Ryan Roxy and welcome to In the Trenches. Wow, folks. Uh, I feel like we're just getting back into it right now. We are literally now back to a live stream episode of In the Trenches. The last couple ones have been um, secret sauce episodes. And right now, it's cool to be live again, isn't it? But along with live comes all those things called technical difficulties. That's why we're on a couple minutes later today, because uh, we are experimenting with new packaging materials, as they would say in Spinal Tap. And uh, in the internet was not our friend in Canada today, but uh, our guest is coming from Canada today. Um, first of all, let me just say this. Um, Get your butts on into the chat, whether you're watching us on our YouTube official channel or you are watching us on Facebook Live. Um, of course, we appreciate you listening to it on Apple and Spotify and Stitcher and all the other Google podcasts. But hit that subscribe button that Vic Chalfont, just our producer, just put up there because uh, we want you to subscribe to the show and hear all these episodes, whether they have technical difficulties or not right? Because here at In the Trenches, what do we do? Well, we try to find out what drives our artists and our entertainers and keeps them inspired and creative, right? Well, the creativity is crazy with our guest today. He fronts a band. He sings from it. He's from the land down under, but now finds himself, like I said, uh, coming from the great white hope, the great white north. Um, so from via Australia, to Canada. Today's guest, welcome to In the Trenches. All about it, Leon Harrison from the band The Lazies. Hello, Leon. Hello, Ryan. How are you, mate? <laughs> Quite the introduction. It was. And you know what? You had to uh, definitely prove your Australianness by calling me mate within two seconds of the introduction. Yeah. So I believe you now. <laughs> G'day, everyone. G'day. <laughs> uh, putting shrimp and all that shit on the barbie and all that stuff. How you doing, <laughs> Leon, man? I, I'm telling you. It, we, we are experimenting with uh, Wi-Fi issues. We're, is Canadian Wi-Fi, do you find it uh, <laughs> slower than <laughs> Australian Wi-Fi? Mate, I am the worst at technology okay so as i was saying to you before the show it's kind of like when someone says they can't cook <laughs> you might get turned off a little <laughs> so uh i would probably say uh with technology that might turn people off whatever but uh <laughs> yeah well, there you go. And there you have it, folks. That is classic Leon. Classic Leon just went to fade to black, mic drop, little introduction. He got, folks, like I say, this might not be the longest in the trenches today. And I'm good with that. <laughs> just put the picture of Leon out there the whole time. And uh, then maybe he can just overdub over his picture. Okay. Leon is back folks. And if you're listening to this in your car, maybe you really do want to pull over because you want to see this blank screen more than anybody else does. I'm telling you, it's important. We have a lot of stuff to talk about today with Leon and his band called the lazies because I was turned on to the lazies a couple years ago. Um, totally blown away by the band. But you know what? To all our new listeners and all our listeners that uh, haven't heard of the Lazies uh, before, we're going to like do this little section called uh, You Gotta Go Back to Move Forward. And I want to talk about, uh, Leon, the origins of the Lazies and how the band began. It began like in, I, I think it was around 2006 in, in Australia, right? Was it Sydney, Melbourne, one of the rock and roll cities? Uh-oh, can't hear you, bro. <laughs> now I can't hear you. Now your voice. Now I get no microphone now. All right. So what we can do now is you can, Vic, he's going to kick you out of the studio and then you're going to sign back on again, okay? Yeah, folks. 
This is one. Of, this is like a throwback episode of In the Trenches, isn't it? Like when we'd have these tech, technical difficulties. Vic, come on here. Come on up here and save me just for a little bit. He doesn't want to come on. By the way, does everybody like the new studio? Huh? Here's the new studio. This is the first. Ep- what a way to christen the new studio uh, with a new episode of complete uh, technical failures so far. But Vic, come on up here. Say hello to your people right there. This is a great Larry. show so far. Loving it. <laughs> Vic, why is your audio perfect and then our guests is not? It's that Arkansas Wi-Fi. It's killer. Mm. Arkansas Wi-Fi. What else is Arkansas known for? Uh, Razorbacks. Yeah, that's the, um, that's the school. Is, is it on your license plate, Razorback State or something like that? No. What's on your What's on your the, license plates the on the nat- bottom of it? It's the natural state. We had the first uh, national river. Was uh, the, was in Arkansas? The natural the buffalo- state. What does that yeah. even mean? Well, okay. we have a lot of a lot of camping and hiking and fishing and things that you would do naturally. Let's see if Leon. Well, I'll get out of this real quickly and <laughs> see if Leon will come back in. <laughs> Oh, Our guest today has been Vic Shelfon. Even the dog's Stanley. not there. Oh, Stanley. wait, the dog's sleeping. There's Stanley down there. And, uh, of course, one of our future guests is still waiting to get online in the back of uh, Vic Shelfon. There he is. Let's let's try okay. your voice. All Leon, right. can I'm... you hear us? Yeah. Can you talk? No. Can't hear you, bro. <laughs> wow. Well... You gotta put that micro. You're a singer, Leon. Just take your just take your lead singer voice and pump it through the internet. No, it's it's nothing happening right now. You're speaking for all those of you that are listening to this uh, audio wise. Maybe you shouldn't. <laughs> maybe you should just watch it. We can do this in sign. If I only knew sign. Try and check your microphone, Leon. And if we can make it happen, we can make it happen. If not, we can always reschedule. I have so I could sit here and talk about the lazies. I've done all my research on you guys. If I could just do it with an Australian accent, though, I can't. You know, my wife's South African, and she tries to. Uh, she always tries to uh, say that I can't do any accent quite that well. <laughs> Much less South African. Is that the way you do it? It's so bad isn't it? You formed in 2006 in Sydney. Yeah, in Sydney. All right. I love this. This is awesome, Jackie. I got to admit, it's not going to, it might not make the actual audio podcast because we can edit all that stuff out. But yeah, this is the mime version. All right, Kathy said uh, Leon could always write his own answers. Yeah, we can do sort of a write-in. Should we just do a chat? You know? Like I said, you know what I think it is? It's the new studio. Did we get cursed by the new studio? I thought I did a nice job of taking all this memorabilia that was stuck up in my attic, right? It was just rolled up into like poster rolls and, uh, you know, what are those? cardboard circular things that you put posters in and um yeah i definitely blame canada please canadian canadian internet what is that they only you know that the internet you have to have video and sound they only just half of it all right you know what vic maybe we should just open up the show today to the floor you want to have come people come up I'm, and, and i'm up just, for it if you are <laughs> You know what? What the hell? We have a little bit of time, and it could just be our, our sort of uh, fu episode of In the Trenches. Who's in the trenches? You're all in the trenches. I'm in the trenches. Vic's in the trenches. We're all. You know where you are? <laughs> I just want to talk about Leon and the Lazies because the band kicks ass, folks, and I wanted you guys so very much to uh, to listen to Leon's story. You know what we could talk about? is the big release coming up. Whoa, look at you, Vic. What a sight. You know what? You are my Ed McMahon, huh? You are. <laughs> <laughs> right you are. Right you are. Or who's the guy that, uh, um, oh, if I can, they all, everybody has a side guy, but Guillermo. You're my Guillermo. Wow. I wanted to be Paul Schaefer. You'd rather be Paul Schaefer? 
He's cool. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. You know we what? got Nick from Sticks and Stones. We got Nick from Sticks and Stones who was go- actually going to be a, uh, a surprise guest. So, you know what? Being, here's the story, folks. Here's the real story. Leon, um, the reason why he, we're doing this show today is because we actually work together in a, um, in a project that Leon has put together called bandwagonworkshops.com, right? Bandwagonworkshops.com is very cool because it mentors younger bands and basically Leon, there he is. Are you back on? I don't know. Can you hear me? It's perfect. Oh, fuck me. I don't know how to say that. (laughs) You can say whatever the fuck you want. This is fucking killing me, bro. Like, fuck. (laughs) We started, folks. Honestly, honestly, is this better? Because this is what I was going to do in the first place. And it's perfect. Oh, I'm sorry to everybody out there. (laughs) <laughs> um, I let my mum down. I've let Ryan down. I've let the show down. You know but what? I'm, I'm here for redemption. <laughs> now you truly are acting like a Canadian. Just don't, <laughs> don't don't start out of the gate with an apology. Yeah, true, right? that. true yeah, that. Yeah, true yeah. That. don't worry, man. You're Australian because uh, Australians never apologize, right? They're taking out prisoners head on. You know what? Have some of mine virtually. We are. You know? uh, <laughs> That's why I'm smiling and laughing the whole time. It's like, yeah, there ah, you go. Hey, There's a there nice picture are. of the band. I'll there have it a are. nice red solo cup. Oh my God, <laughs> Leon! When was the last time you drank out of a red solo cup? Because uh, I know you're used to that touring vibe. When was yeah. that? Yeah, well, a while ago. Um, they're good for playing beer pong too. Those cups. That's generally what you do with them. Uh, I don't know, mate. I I can't tell you the last time. Uh, uh, I was drinking within a, uh, a big crowd or a big posse of people. This whole COVID thing's just changed everything, right? So, well, yeah. it's open doors. It, it has open doors. It, it, you know, to be honest with you, the reason why we're able to, you know, Vic and, and the whole entire RGA team and the Inner Trenches team is able to make as much as we do out of the uh, podcast and put as much work as we can into the podcast is because there is this time. And I know normally in a regular touring year, the guests that we would be able to, you know, to ask wouldn't be able to do it all the time because they'd be busy working, but now they're sitting yeah. at home and everybody's just like chilling. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you're not chilling. You're like I said, I, I, I touched on it a little bit with a uh, bandwagon and workshops, but I want to get into that in a little bit. Cause now I feel we can start from the beginning. So everybody, sure. Uh, I apologize again. I'm not the Canadian, but I apologize for inviting you into the the chat because I feel felt you know at one point I was just going to release the gates and let everybody come on uh, stage and let everyone c- get on the screen. But now you're here. I want people to hear your story and uh, let's go back to get forward and let's talk sure. about the lazies. Let's talk about how they formed. Mm-hmm. Where you guys did, and how the hell did an Aussie band end up in Toronto, Canada? So start from the beginning, 2006. Am I right? right. Yes, two, uh, 2006 November was our first show in Sydney at a place called the Excelsior that now lo- no longer exists. But um, yeah, it was a good live rock and roll bar. I don't know, Ryan. Our 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 whole story is just kind of like a wildfire. Really, it's it's um. It's been it's been fantastic, but yeah, it's, you know, it just goes wherever it wants, and uh, <laughs> we we sort of uh, just had an attitude that we just didn't want to do anything else, and um, you know, kind of going through school at the time I did, I went to a Catholic school. I was always told to tuck my shirt in and all this kind of other crap, and uh, it was just a very regimented way. Of life I thought and then once I finally got out of school I was like well what's the best thing I could do to uh rage against the system and that was singing a rock and roll band so and you know I I always tell my friends or whoever asked this kind of story it's like we always got a vibe from the crowd no matter whether it was a few people or whether we were lucky enough to play in front of a lot of people there was always this undertone of uh you know this, this this excitement from the punter of what they just experienced and then that really 
started to fuel our desire and drive to just kick more goals and do more and more and more. And it wasn't until probably around 2013 when we met uh, a New York producer that we uh, decided we need to take this step going overseas and make a splash over there and sort of take what we've crafted to a new world, Um, which was super daunting, but we had people who got behind us. And from there, we went to Canada and we got more people behind us and to the current team with uh, guys like Ian Dessar from Billy Talent, um, even guys yeah, like Yeah, he was instrumental now. on the last record, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it was honestly, mate, through sheer persistence and, uh, and you know, at times we've just wanted to pack it in and say, fuck it, but that's not what the rock and roll spirit's about, is it? you just got to rise above it and yep. just keep rising from the ashes and <laughs> find some good in what's happening and um and here we are so uh 2020 so that's oh. what yeah it's 12 13 14 years of kind of been going 14 years man i always yeah. say practice persistence patience and the mm-hmm. persistence is tough i mean because you got to keep, keep on kicking down those doors but yeah most bands when they start the lazies they have a lineup and then there's some lineup changes has mm-hmm. this been a few different lineup changes since the beginning because i know the current lineup you're on lead vocals uh, you have maddie morris on guitar yeah is, is, is liam is, on, is she yeah. on, he's yeah. on guitar glenn yeah. williams on the bass uh, unfortunately yeah. glenn no? uh, left the band last or two years ago now and we now have troy tj our canadian boyfriend okay. on on bass <laughs> that's and him on the about, far right and how about andy nielsen is yeah. he still on the drums yeah he's still smacking the skins uh right. so this lineup is what we consider the strongest and most determined uh, aside you know of willie because he was in there for a good 12 years that's glenn the old bass player that's um right. but um yeah it's a very strong lineup now and it's it's had to do a few reshuffles and things like that but you know, it's tough work to keep something going for 14 years with, you know, running on an oily rag type thing. So uh, people have. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the thing is, you guys, you can consider it an oily oily rag, which is a nice way to describe your band. We're an oily rag. <laughs> but there's a bunch of you oily rag bands from Australia that sort of hang together and you play this brand and this style of rock and roll that's just undeniable. Like I said, it the crowd feeds off it. And I know that you're close with the with the guys in Airborne who we were able to tour with earlier this year before the whole world fucking shut down and stuff. And we were down in Australia and we were in New Zealand touring with Airborne and they had such great things to say about you guys. Oh, did you guys nice. ever tour together or did you do shows together as well? Yeah, last summer in Europe, we did a bunch of shows together. Um, and, you know, the party just rolls on with those boys. <laughs> <laughs> they, they definitely, like, they've got, like, they've got a keg and beer taps in their bus. Like, if that doesn't, if that doesn't say enough, what does? So, um, <laughs> yeah, they're really cool guys, you know, but there must be the Australian spirit, I guess, that brings us closer together and, uh, we sort of relate to one another and all sorts of stuff. So, yeah, it's a it's a really good time with those guys. I'm glad they got nice things to, things to say about us because uh, we were pretty rowdy on all the shows. Every single – if you guys – and you're going to start following uh, Leon's Instagram uh, and you're going to definitely follow the Lazies. The Lazies is much easier to follow because it's at the Lazies. But, yeah. but Leon, your own social media, the – Draw, dot yeah australian dot dreamer yeah right. so good luck trying to find that on in any search <laughs> engine <laughs> i'm the but, australian dreamer but why are you the australian dreamer are you really a dreamer uh yeah I, i'm aquarius so i think i am <laughs> yeah man uh i guess i am a dreamer because uh, i've got dare written on my arm uh i kind of don't really take things too seriously but then i do you know i th- i think i could sum myself up by saying if i raged against the system my entire life that's a win <laughs> good. you know what i mean yeah. good for you well yeah. the thing is three albums in 
the EPs were before that, right? Before you released Prison Earth in 2010, uh, mm-hmm. then you had a self-titled album, 2014. Mm-hmm. Now, at that point, had you moved, and that was the Lazies. There you go right there. Um, at that point, had you moved to Toronto? <laughs> and when was the when did the move happen? And did you say 2013 around then? Uh, 2014, around then we started coming to Canada. We showcased at Canadian Music Week and uh, really um, lit some fires there. And uh, that's when we first got introduced to Ian Vassar from Billy Talent. And yeah. he expressed um, that he wanted to work with the band. And basically what we did was we came back to Canada and recorded a song called Shake It Like You Mean It. <laughs> um, with him, and then we tied that onto the record. So we kind of led with that single, and then that was kind of the release of the album in All 2015. Right. And then you also had some more Canadian uh, rockers, because you guys tend to find each other. You straight-ahead rock and roll guys tend to sort of gravitate towards you each other. Uh, there was Eric Ratz from Monster Truck, right? And did he uh, have some – or was – so Eric Ratz is producer of Monster Truck, and he yeah. is like a like a world class producer mixer. He won the Juno of the Year over here for producing, I think, about a year ago or so. But yeah, he he's done a lot of records, and he's heavily affiliated with Ian from Billy Talent. They have a production company together, and then yeah. they they signed us to their production company. So it's all yeah, it's oh, how long you got. <laughs> no, we now now that you have good internet, we have all night. Before we had about, we were down to the last seconds. We were, oh, we were no. almost gonna, th- we were we were just gonna throw in the oily rag. It was yeah, almost the- done, folks. <laughs> but but you came out of the ashes like the man with the. We're in the trenches. We're working. We're getting it done. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings us to the latest album, honestly. And this is the album that I was turned on to called Tropical Hazards. It's the Lazies. Uh, folks, right now, well, not right now, because we actually have stable internet. But once uh, this podcast is over, I want you to go and search out this record because there's such, it's a great spectrum of music. A lot of it's straight ahead music. A lot of it's straight ahead rock and roll. But yeah. you know what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk yeah. about that one song that yeah, just like kills it for me. I love it. Yeah. And, is it Young Modern Lightning? Young Modern Lightning. There yeah, it is, buddy. Right. And and that's my that's the song, folks. Roxy's calling it. At least it's Roxy's <laughs> favorite. But then I go then I went in and checked out a couple of your other singles from that album. And you know, I don't know. You got it's it's huge. 1.3 million hits on uh mm-hmm. what was the single that had no, nothing, it? nothing no. but nothing but trouble. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, right. 1.5 million. It's almost sorry. up to 2 million now on Spotify, which is uh, which is pretty remarkable, really. You got to update um, your graphics. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm t- I'm too busy buying Ferraris from all the royalties. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you need to buy an Ethernet cable, dude, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or an extension cord. We'll start. We'll we'll start with the Ethernet <laughs> extension cord. Buy a Wi-Fi router. <laughs> I'm on Spend- dial-up. <laughs> you know what? Splurge for the 4G with two million streams. All right, <laughs> two million streams. You know what that means? That means you made about five bucks off of yeah, royalties, right? Isn't that great? <laughs> Fantastic! So you just had some folks right there that that complimented how nice the Young Modern Lightning is, and um, there it is. Oh, Half Mass Blues. You got a lot of people in there. You got your peeps in there right now in the trenches. Yeah. Chat. If you guys, there it is, Young Modern Lightning. A lot of support for that song, folks. Thank you got to check it out. Um, again, welcome to our sort of extended version. We had a little, you know, a little technical snafu, but uh, we're hanging out with Leon Harrison from the Lazies, uh, lead singer, front man, uh, all around inspirational Aussie man <laughs> living in the Australian Dreamer. <laughs> He's the Australian dreamer, and he's now having to dress in friggin' thermal underwear because you're living in Canada. What was that? Was that a big? I mean, come on, it's pretty obvious. But what isn't it a big shock coming from a climate like Australia? To, yeah. To, to, you know? The best way I sum it up, though, Ryan, is that 
I was lucky enough to be involved in the surfing culture, the beach culture, all the wonderful things Australia has to offer for a long part of my life. And unfortunately, uh, the Australian music industry really isn't big enough to support the sort of aspirations my band had. So we wanted to make our mark internationally, and that's very, very difficult uh, living on that side of the globe. Now, that said, it's not impossible, but, um, you know, it, 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 there's always a job at hand and there's always a task at hand. So having me and Matt in Canada doing a lot of the writing and a lot of the uh, pre-production, all sorts of things, because um, the Aussie music scene fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there you, you know, go. our audience um, tells well, it like you, it you is. Said it. You said it, Mel. Don't um, sugarcoat it there, chat room. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't sugarcoat it at all. You you know there's always a job to do. So being in Canada or, and Toronto where our team was and now so close to Europe and the UK, it made a lot more sense. And i tell you this, the Toronto summer is fucking unbelievable. Like yeah. the spirit within the city and the uh, yeah just the spirit within the city is just so this is the best two weeks out of the year right <laughs> <laughs> no. look at living in stockholm i i, I get the, i get the same exact vibe because you know what people don't uh, associate stockholm with having a really nice beautiful summer but it is and it, it lasted this summer you know if it, whether it's global warming or whatever the hell it is, it lasted longer than normal. Let me tell mm -hmm. you. And now it's starting to get a little bit cold outside. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I've been in Toronto in the, in the, in the summertime. It's amazing, right? It's such Queen a Street. beautiful time. Yeah, that's where I live. And um, you live down on Queen Street? Oh, I certainly do. Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'm, mate, I'm in the hip part of town, pal. Well, dude, Queen, well, Queen Street goes from from hit yeah. to slum, back to hit again. Yeah, it, it, it goes through a lot of changes, that one street. Yeah, it does. But, yeah, it cost me an arm and a leg to live here, whatever. But uh, it's it's a good time. And, you know, living over here has taught me stuff like appreciation of seasons. Australians don't do that. It's just hot all year round. And then they bit, then they bitch when it's cold for three months. <laughs> yeah. well, you were you were talking about surf and you were into the surf culture. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you you went in there with all the sharks. Yeah, all the sharks. Yeah, wow. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had um, they were called the Max Boys, eh? Some really good friends of mine back home. And one thing about the surf community is everybody just looks out for one another, and there's a really positive vibe. And then you hit the waves, and things are just awesome. And life's awesome. But, like, at the end of the day, like, when I started doing that up until, like, 25 and music wasn't really taking me where I wanted it to in Australia, I had to fucking pack away the surfboard and start hitting, you know, hitting the planes overseas. <laughs> the other guys in the band, did any of the other guys surf as well or did they have other types of interests like that other than music or was it – were you guys all common – did you have that common goal of music? Was that where you all? Yeah. Had? Well, we really had yeah, the other ladder there because, you know, where we came from as well, I will say it's a surf town, but there was an incredible amount of music in a place called the Central Coast in Australia. Um, so much so I once did a Facebook thread feed thing called the Central Coast Band Museum, and you would you would be blown away how inundated that um that forum got with people posting their old bands and little newspaper clippings and all sorts of stuff. So yeah, a real, a real music community there too. So yeah, the other guys in the band were mainly musos. I mean, Matt's a musician through and through, right? Yeah. His guitar is like his toothbrush. It's, <laughs> it's never not always in his bag. Him. Yeah. It's always with him. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It wasn't with him though when he wasn't he down there. I, I think I met him at uh, Frankie's Pizza when we all played down there. No, you met Liam. Okay, the one that and, doesn't uh, bring his guitar everywhere. <laughs> he brings a beer everywhere. <laughs> yeah, we went to high school together. So uh, yeah, he's uh, he's yeah. Liam's been in bands his whole life, and when he had the opportunity to join the Lazies about seven or eight years ago, he uh, you know gracefully accepted. <laughs> no, he didn't really. Um, and yeah, he's he's like a good backbone to the band, Liam. He's 
He's really neutral. He's like Switzerland. He's lukewarm water. We were talking about that. <laughs> we were talking about that uh, last week with with Desmond Child, where he was saying that in between he had to be in between uh, John Bon Jovi and uh, Richie Zambora, or maybe no, no, it was actually Steven Tyler and Joe Perry, and they were like fire and ice, and then he was yeah. like lukewarm water because he was like sort of yeah. The bridge. Yeah, got everything I, together. I think every band has to to have that, um, and I think every band can recognize that you know it's it's tough to keep something together and something stable, and and especially for year after year after year and running on that oily rag. So you've just got to take the good <laughs> with the bad and well, try to navigate it. I'm interested about that because you know. A lot of artists and bands say that they, they need to be inspired to be creative, you know, in something in a way that's maybe beyond their control or that they can't really explain it. And then others have a definite process, you know, a routine or a process that 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 basically get, forces them to get creative. Um, how does it work for you and how does it work for the lazies, um, the whole creative process? Are you always inspired or do you definitely have a process in which you get that inspiration from um well i think early days like coming to canada matt and myself really bonded and um you know we had to have each other's backs right and even before that stage we were we were destined to write a a, a new record to follow up the, the tropical uh sorry the self-titled uh, album so we literally just put everything into it and with that came the inspiration i guess and Coming to Canada and taking that leap was just an achievement in itself. So we were kind of inspired by what we were doing. Um, and obviously Ian uh, from Billy Talent has a, a major role now within our writing circle um, and that really developed naturally. Um, for those who don't know Billy Talent, you should check them out. Like this guy's an absolute powerhouse on guitar. They're a four-piece band but he's the only guitarist in Billy Talent and you know, it's just, it's the toughest guitar tone you'll probably hear from one single guitarist. Um, so to have him come into the fold and write with us and produce us again was an inspiration. And, um, I, you know, again, it's, there's always ups and downs. There's, that's the music business, right? So sometimes you'll be like, I don't want to do this. And then sometimes <laughs> you'll be like, let's do it. So, right. but did you already always have a schedule with the band of like, this is where we're rehearsing? We're rehearsing five days a week, you know, between these hours, we're not going to uh, get crazy or is it like, you know, oh, well, let's get crazy whenever we're going to practice when it feels right. And back to that red solo cup photo. <laughs> Look at that photo. <laughs> hey, Jesus. Um, so I, I would say more Matt and myself have more, had more of the structured, um, always getting together type thing to write the, uh, to write tropical hazards, um, you know his his old girlfriend was an airline hostess. She'd bring all this alcohol back duty free from LA and small <laughs> bottles. Oh no, not she bring she bring a ton of small bottles that she smuggled in her purse or something. <laughs> no, we were she, we're not that desperate. But <laughs> um, no, but oh, we'd man. like we'd we'd drink all her alcohol and write and record and do demos and all this sort of stuff, and um, it was a really good time. So. To see the record do uh, really well was was a nice payoff. Um, yep. We had all anticipation of going into sort of heavy writing for a new record. Um, I must say that we always kind of have to also work around Billy Talent's schedule because Ian's in, obviously, they're a very successful band. So we just have to be diligent and sort of work together because they're just finishing up their record now. Uh, and with COVID coming into the picture too, um, we yeah. haven't really rushed anything because, I mean, to be honest, it's kind of been a nice little break for us. We haven't, we haven't literally stopped touring. Now I'm not saying we're some freaking arena band because I wish we were, <laughs> <laughs> but, but we haven't, um, we haven't stopped touring the DIY way in vans and fucking couches and floors and occasional hotels and all this sort of yeah. stuff for 10 years. 
Lost and, Angels style, we call it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, mate, like we've, we've, you know, we've done the hard yards. I know that. <laughs> Planet Axe style. We all know that. We all know the deal that's in the trenches, man. We know that's, yeah. that's in the trenches touring. But you know what? Here, problem solved. You guys just uh, always, you could be Billy Talent's uh, permanent support act. Because then go. all of a sudden that always works out, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's, I'll, I'll, I guess I know some people who know some people that have fax machines. We'll see if we can make it happen. <laughs> Dial up. We can, dude, you, you need, you probably have a fax machine with your archaic <laughs> internet. There's probably a fax machine lying around somewhere in that apartment of yours. Come on, bottle man. Of, bottle, of, bottle of tequila. That's not bad. <laughs> Drink, pour it up, pour it up. <laughs> you know, what's more rewarding for you, especially with the success that you have with uh, tropical hazards? Was it seeing those, streams add up on spotify or was it going on tour in europe to a place that you know you had not played yet and then people going ape shit over your songs oh look at me there i'm dead <laughs> where are you that's in, Liv that's, in that's you <laughs> i know right i'm absolutely look at me i look like i've been hit by a car um, no, no, you got you very you're kind of gaunt right there. You, I mean, oh, you, no. you you trim trim the beard down a little bit. Oh. Nah, look like how happy Matt. Pipe. Look how happy Matt is because that's in uh, Liverpool in the cavern or whatever that the Beatles. Yeah, started. that's the Cavern Club. That's yeah. the uh, infamous yeah. Beatles Beatles Cavern Club, folks. If you're uh, listening to these podcast um, audio audio wise, uh, get on in on the uh, video to the YouTube. Uh, to the YouTube official Ryan Roxy channel and press subscribe. And uh, if you have some time, get in on the chat because you just missed a great shot of the Cavern Club <laughs> and um, our guest Leon Harrison from the Lazies playing it. How was that gig? Was it? Was it? Or were oh, you just there? Yeah, we played around the corner. We, I was just uh, saying, was it a picture? <laughs> was it, was it, it was a photo op? Damn it! Yeah, <laughs> they got a pint. They had like the cover band playing all the Beatles songs and all that sort of stuff. And unfortunately, we we were based out of uh, uh, where was it Birmingham or something, so we had to get going after that. But uh, I was I was just oh yeah, I was so tired in that photo. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, man, like back to your question, like to be honest. I'd lie if I said I didn't uh, get a thrill out of those uh, streams going up and up and up. I'd, I'd prefer it if you weren't more money from it, um, obviously. Uh, and then, I yeah, like travelling over and playing the UK for the first time was a really, um, you know, that was a really great feeling and occasion actually for our band. Um, it was a dream. And then obviously Germany. Uh, they're probably the best rock and roll crowd in the world. Uh, they just go nuts and they love it. They just have no inhibitions when they're in a crowd and they make a band feel so at home and warm and fuzzy. So, yeah, man, doing all that uh, European and UK travel was was bloody amazing, yeah. Fuck, man. I feel for, <laughs> I feel for bands like the Lazies, folks, because – I'm I'm looking at your gigs right now, and, and and I know the club tour. I know it's some DIY touring, but you're having fun. You're kicking ass. You're converting fans over. You're building it up. Um, mm. Thing that's relatively new, you know, old schooler like me. I've been lucky to be kicking around for many many European tours and stuff like that with riding the coattails of Alice Cooper, as you know. But I mean, I really feel for the lazies because here's this band, you know. I'm looking at Vakken Festival. You got yeah. you got experience the Vakken Festival. Well, well, at least, at got least you got a taste. What's that? What do you what do you mean? I got, you got the a tattoo. Tattoo. Got the tattoo. Is it a rose tattoo? Oh, look at that. I got the what tattoo. I just that's see the, a hairy that's the Wacken tattoo. Okay. okay. The Wacken it looks like tattoo. a rocket ship. Okay. What? We all we all got the tattoo because it was the 30th anniversary for Wacken or Vakken or however you say it. Yeah, and uh, we played to like 20,000 people that day. It was nuts. It's amazing, man. Yeah, oh. okay. well, I'm glad that you guys were able to play that. And I really hope that it does uh, happen again because, yeah, it, it, 2020 just came in sort of like a tsunami and just fucking crushed a lot of those bands that were just just making making it up 
and getting their followings together and getting uh, really, really strong crowds uh, from different countries and building it up. And then this mm. friggin' thing, there's a nice shot of, of Vakken folks. Yeah, that's, that's wow. killer. Right? Yeah. It was, uh, I mean, yeah, coming from Australia, getting to stand on that stage and do that, like, uh, yeah, I wish I was getting paid a million bucks to do it, but whatever. <laughs> you know what? You know what, Ryan? I gotta say, man, there's a reason why I don't have a million bucks, man. I'd be dead. I would be literally dead. That'd be the end. <laughs> you took it all the way. All right. I, would, I would take it too far. Last of the rock stars, baby. That's the attitude. <laughs> no, I'm serious, man. How many bands have that go for it by all means necessary attitude these days? And I know that you guys do. I know that I know that the lazies do. And like I said, the true test is going to be what's going to happen the second those doors sort of start opening. Because everyone knows that the doors opening for the the bands like that I'm associated with, like the Alice Coopers of the world, or perhaps you're wearing on your t-shirt, unfortunately, will be the last mofos to be able to go out there. Because for ones, we have the most by proxy, we have the uh, per capita, the, the oldest audience out there. So maybe the younger audience, you're going to reel them back in. You know, mm -hmm. and have, have you guys made a, a conscious decision of when this stuff does uh, sort of get the green light to go back and out, go back out touring? Will you guys do that? Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'll just get that fucking oily rag out of the cupboard and away we go. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just have to wear the oily rag around your face. That's all it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, I definitely know one thing. I wouldn't be taking control of the live stream should we do a live stream. <laughs> 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 man i fear that by the time uh by the time they allow touring back in full force uh, there'll be a whole new technology out there it'll all be holograms at that point oh, no. i know right it'll be something crazy but uh, we have to do I'd something in the to. meantime we have to yeah. do something in the meantime we have to take our uh sort of experience our knowledge and pass it on to the next generation and that's basically why how we became tight and how we became mm. friends is that something that you started in mm. Australia and now have it's transcended and carried over to Toronto and you're building it up uh, big time in Toronto. You've got me involved. Um, you've got a whole list of great mentors involved with John Harvey from monster truck. You got Kendra from creep show. Um, you got a bunch of producers, a bunch of engineers. I want you to tell the people, uh, Mr. Ooh. Leon Harrison, all about your project, the bandwagon workshops. Will you please? <laughs> I'd love to. Uh, so basically you've, uh, you've given it a great introduction there, Ryan, but Thank yeah, you. my, co my concept was to, uh, basically give back, to aspiring artists by giving them the mentorship and the guidance and basically the networking and connection that I think they deserve. If they work hard enough uh, and, they, and they want it hard enough and they want it so bad, then why shouldn't they be connecting with people who are potentially, you know, there, right? So, uh, you know, with COVID and obviously everybody's tours getting cancelled and the music industry somewhat being set on fire, um, I thought to myself, well, this would be a perfect opportunity to get people. Oh, there's my manager, Chris. There he is. He's, he's, Where's he? he is. He's uh, the guy that with the biggest head that almost takes up the whole I square. see it. I see it. <laughs> it's a so, big head. Yeah, there he is. There he is. Um, what, a, <laughs> what a champion he is. He's taking all those stages we've talked about. He's big taking head. us the, to those stages. But, uh, yeah, so – can, like, I mean, for example, a band works with you and me, like uh, Reckless 4. We did, a, we did a song with those guys, right? Yep. Um, a beautiful song. Uh, the, the band came to us. It was a song about a, a friend passing, and they had a title. But the song, you know, it needed work, didn't it? So a Ryan bit. and myself, yeah. The Ryan ends and odds, the bits and bobs. Yeah, exactly. Ryan and myself get online just as we're doing right now. And we go through the song, we break it down, we talk about the song, we review the lyrics, and we offer mentorship and guidance for that song, right? So fast forward now we've got this song. Uh, 
so you saw my manager just on the screen then. Now, there's nothing stopping you and me, Ryan, from going, hey, this band's written a great song. They need a bit of guidance. They need a manager. Is it something you're interested in doing? Now, it's not as easy as ABC, but why can't the platform be there to at least give the opportunity? Help someone out. Exactly. Yeah, bring them up. So uh, that the goes name of that song, the, board. the name of that song, Won't Let This Fire Die, right? That's the one. And right. uh, yeah, you know, I think we did a great job in terms of producing it, sort of, you know, co-writing it with them. And I'm telling you now, those guys c couldn't be thankful enough and they've learnt skills for life. They've made a connection with you. Um, same as the Sticks and Stones guys, which I can see are on, on the line. Uh, you've you've also worked with Nick out of that band through this initiative. Um, right. There's just there's so many different examples. So um, basically, if if you're wanting a career in music, whether it's on the stage or off the stage, this platform allows you to connect with the right people. It's going to give you the mentorship to improve your chances, basically, of developing a career. Does that really, that sums it up, doesn't it? Yeah. And are you going to be able to do this when you guys go back out on tour? Are you still going to be able to keep this up and running? Because you, hopefully the idea is that you get a strong enough and big enough network uh, together that it can be sustainable while people are out Absolutely. on tour as well. I mean, yeah, like uh, it, it, it's a, it's a work-as-you-can basis for the mentors. I got a like for example, as a band, uh, Dead Levy from Regina in Canada. Regina, yeah, I'm Regina. <laughs> I know Regina. Everybody knows Regina. The joke, <laughs> yeah, the itself. joke. <laughs> um, and uh, they're working with myself and John from Monster Truck, right? Um, so John Harvey, John Harvey from Monster Truck, and yeah. basically, you know, once we we're going to co-produce this uh, this little EP that we're going to do for them, and you know, structure a nice video and and whatnot, and uh, from there. You know, I hope that the bandwagon initiative can sort of entice guys like myself, guys like John, they've worked on the project. Hey, how about you throw them a support slot? Uh, how about you, you know, get them on a tour? Or uh, if somebody at a radio station does ask, hey, what else do you do aside of this? Well, you know, I'm working with this band. I think that's a, a great cause and it's going to sustain music and it's going to basically give a platform for aspiring artists to, to get heard. Yeah. So I please. always talk about, yeah, <laughs> I always talk about passing the torch of rock and roll onto the next generation. Yeah. And I think this is exactly what it is. This is the exact, exactly why I got involved in it. So folks, um, please do go check out uh, band, bandwagonworkshops.com. That's bandwagonworkshops.com. And you, you are listening to the inspiring words of Leon Harrison <laughs> from the Lazies and, of course, Thank Bandwagon's you. Workshops. Um, Thank you. We are now going to go to a <laughs> section of the show. There it is. A delightful personality, <laughs> Thank Leon. you. Horrible you. internet, but Horrible delightful, internet. Per <laughs> delightful <laughs> personality and a great voice, by the way. Again, you. uh, Young Modern Lightning, go check out that song. Of course, you're going to check out the Straight Ahead songs because they're, they're going to rock and yeah. kick your, you know, kick your ass. But that, I'm telling you, that tune. And what did you tell me? Because when before we really knew each other about that song, you were saying, well. A producer liked it. This is his favorite song, but it was nobody in the band's favorite song. Because there's a little bit, you know, it's it's about young love, and when it strikes, that's the young modern lightning reference, right? So, kitty porn? Are you? You're not talking about? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, <young> love. <laughs> you can't say young love you in know, 2020. You know, no, I know. Geez, you can't say anything. You know when you know when you meet somebody and it's just this combustion of all this beauty and whatnot, and 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 then you realise about a decade later things kind of suck. <laughs> That's when we take you back to young modern lightning, right? There's a young modern lightning to oily rag. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sounds sick. Sounds it is. sounds like a porn that didn't make it. <laughs> I think I did the music for it. So listen, listen, because now we have a part of the set called Let the People Speak. It's not me speaking. These are the people. So, Vic, it's time for... Oh, 
<laughs> there you go. See, it's our top-notch production that keeps us getting hundreds and hundreds of views every week. Um, we're in the dozens, folks. We're in the dozens. And by the way, we could always use uh, you as a, uh, a subscriber. So I'm not talking to you guys in the chat because I know you have already subscribed or you guys listening to us on uh, Apple or, or Spotify um, because you obviously can't. But Leon, I'm talking to you personally. Will you hit the subscribe button and just subscribe to us? Because I know you don't already, bastard. There is one I'm, more subscriber. I'm gonna... I'm going to tell you, I don't even know where the subscribe Actually, button is, bro. Right? the computer because it's working right now. Well, yeah, what's the subscribe button? Don't worry. Don't worry. Let's not, let's not tempt yeah, fate. Yeah, let's not tempt Let the people what's speak working. what's happening. Our first question is from at Jackie.Cowell2. What's something nobody would know about you, Leon? Why would you even want to say it? Wait a second. Why, why, why is that question? If someone, yeah, well, sneaky, we do it? want to know something that nobody would know about you. What is it? I'll so, go to Harry I, back. <laughs> shit, hold on, because I spoke over it, and I'm really uh, sorry because that's our soundbite. What's something that nobody would know about you, Leon? I've got a hairy back. <laughs> <laughs> if I could do a spit take, I would. That's perfect. So you got a Paul Stanley back. That's kind of yeah, cool. Yeah, man. I've got a rug. I've got a rug. You got a rug? All right. <laughs> yeah, have you ever shaved it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the really? summer season. In the does, summer it grow, season. does it grow back? Oh, oh, lovely, hairy back. Dude, no matter what, no matter what thing that you think might be, might, there it is. Look, you got the Show whole no way. Room on fire. No You're way. on fire for your hairy back. <laughs> Everybody want to pull Stanley back? <laughs> like the taste of alcohol <laughs> <laughs> so i found though like when you shave or, or you do something you, you take something off it grows back heavier so now is it more of a sasquatching thing now that you live up in Canada, <laughs> <are you? laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it's, 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 not great. it's not great once big i did big. hot yoga i did hot yoga once and the sweat was foul i had my shirt off <laughs> I felt terrible for everyone in the room. Everyone. Those are, those are two things that nobody should know about you. <laughs> One, you got a hairy back. Two, you've done hot yoga. I, I, hot yoga just sounds smelly. It That's, just, it sounds. It's not great. It sounds gross. It really is. <laughs> but thank you for the question, Jackie. Awesome. Um, our next question from Let the People Speak uh, is, at, for, comes from at d.ee.p17. Uh, Either that's deep purple fan or a Johnny Depp fan that doesn't know how to spell. I'm not sure. We will see. What's the best part of your career? Uh, probably, yeah, last year playing the European festivals uh, and getting to the UK. But yeah. in, in, in saying that too, I should acknowledge the fact that Canada was the first sort of calling card for our band. So let's say international okay. travel. Yeah, yeah. brokers. So international travel uh, as tiring as it gets, it's been an incredible experience. Mm -hmm. Very thank good. you for your thank you for your question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one more question that we have uh, from and at Andiavac. Uh, a favorite experience in life. And don't say hot yoga because you've already answered that oh, one. Shit, you have a favorite experience because we talked about Vakin. That was a pretty. That's got to be a yeah. experience. But, is there a favorite? Can you say it? It's a gig or is it non-gig related? Was there a wave? Was there a oh, wave that you rode oh. one time when you were surfing that was like, shit, that's the cool wave. That's the one. <laughs> no, well, you know what I'm going to say? I'll say two. I'll break it into two. Best performance was Wacken, undoubtedly. And one of my best experiences was being able to travel to the Eagle's Nest in Austria with my dad. And despite it being the home of that horrible human being, it's right on the top of the uh, the Austrian Alps, and uh, it's it was just a wonderful day. So yeah, I got to do that with my dad. We got some photos up there, and that's something I'll always remember. That's amazing. But, yeah, that's great. That's, hey Vic, can you put those photos up of that that they have it from that experience? Do you have that? No. Okay, great. I mean, <laughs> it's the one thing I thought he, uh, we asked him to get those photos of you and your dad. No, you don't have it? Okay. Um, 
<laughs> Poor Vic. We love Vic. Oh, you know Vic, what? I put him through. I put him oh, through. You, absolute trust me. He had a, a mini a mini anxiety attack coming on screen while I was while we were covering for you while you were trying to sort of come up with a new data plan through Verizon or whatever <laughs> the hell you were trying to get internet. A new we, data we, plan. Vic Vic came up and tried to you know you know be my co-host and I called him Guillermo and then he got offended and then he left. I don't know what happened. It's, it's all right. He is my Guillermo. He's all of your Guillermos, dude. This is in the trenches and you know what? Let the people speak has something special because it has a little twist. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. He does it out of spite. There he does. He Do you does have the one with of... my dad? Do you have the one? Does he have the one dad? with your dad? Do you have that? It should, be, no? it should be near that one, or did you just Google that picture? <laughs> <He> just Googled... <laughs> <laughs> That's actually looking back at the yeah the nest. Uh, a bit of history. They didn't blow it up when they uh, came in and swooped that area. I don't know why there was like three compounds, but they left that one up there. That was Hitler's tea house, and uh, apparently he didn't like it because he was a fucking piece of shit or whatever yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a <laughs> you're not gonna get some you're not gonna get hate for saying that trust me you're not gonna get canceled for saying yeah fuck hitler you know <laughs> who knows it's 2020 you might jesus yeah i know right um but yeah what a what an experience i europe europe's an incredible place Ah oh, man well i'm glad that you were able to experience it with your father that sounds like a very cool time um mm. Our last sort of uh, let the people speak is mm -hmm. has a little bit of a secret sauce episode thrown in, which I know you don't really understand what that means, but our uh, longtime listeners do because that means we get someone live in oh. to ask their question. And guess who it is? We've already talked about him. It's Nick from Sticks and Stone. Hey, <laughs> What's going on? Hey, buddy. How are you? I'm good. My How's question is going. It is. It's. It's going. It's going good, man. Uh, we good, recorded. Man. I. Would, I think two songs are recorded almost fully. Just have to do vocal tracks on, and Sweet. then the other three. Robert just finished doing drums on that, so now nice. we just got to go finish recording that. I was just Kill doing up. a bit of recording uh, earlier, but uh, yeah. Anyway, Kill enough. Kid has me. a way better studio than me. <laughs> yeah, it's cool, isn't it? Hey, um, hey, you want me to do a little bit? Mentor, hey, hold on, Nick. You want me to do a little bit of mentoring right away, just so I can take the microphone and do it more of a side <laughs> thing, so it doesn't cover your beautiful face. All right, you're like 17 years old. You, you go. got that beautiful face. You got to you know, people see it. There you go. I can't help then it. I don't, I don't have a nice beard like Leon. I can't. <laughs> He's got better equipment than me. <laughs> oh, let me see. And grow a beard, like like us. Do you have hair on your there back by any chance, Nicholas? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I know Leon does. Oh, it's <laughs> terrible. You've you seen me smell in the pool, it, right? right? Seen yeah. Me in the pool. <laughs> Gee, Lucas. Oh no. <laughs> You're going to catch a lot of a lot of ladies uh, on fire in the chat with that hairy back talk. Oh, some God. some ladies some ladies like it. I'm going to tell they you. They do. There's, there's websites <laughs> dedicated to it. Are you kidding me? Oh really? <laughs> yeah. You. I. I, I, I don't know. Wow. I can attest. So hold on there. Uh, Nicholas, you do have a question for uh, Mr. Leon Harrison, don't you? Yes, I do. Have I actually have, can I say more than one question? That's fine. If All we right. said no, that'd be child abuse. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got, I've got two. First one, have you ever been in a situation when you were touring where you're like, oh shit, I might not make it out of this. Cause uh, I was watching. I was watching a couple of interviews and I know, I know that's like almost everybody has had that experience. Oh yeah. Um, I've definitely, uh, thought driving through Northern Ontario in blizzards with the road non-visible yeah. <laughs> with <laughs> semi trailers just screaming by you because they don't give a shit. No, they, they gotta get up. They gotta get to point really B. Out. Yeah, and they're like in a. You got to get to Regina. I have literally thought this is the end in those scenarios, which is pretty scary. But yeah, yeah, I, will, I won't be driving through there around winter ever again. That's just uh, I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah, I once not... sculled a bottle of red wine just to just to make it through. <laughs> oh God, 
And for those of you that don't know, that's Nick right there from the band Sticks and Stones, uh, actually another Canadian-based band. Yeah. Uh, so you can check them out as well. So uh, and they worked with a- Bandwagon with me and yeah, John we did. Monster Truck. We did, yeah. It was a great experience, man. We wrote all five of the songs that we had that we're recording. We we did with Bandwagon. So it, uh, it was a great experience getting together for about what was it three weeks that we yeah. uh, that we worked together. Yeah, um, you catch yeah, that? Early, early everybody in crowd, time. everybody in the trenches. Did you catch that? He said about about. So that's about about. proving he's from about. Canada, born and raised. There about. it is. <laughs> yeah, man, it was it was it was awesome because we had never, especially us starting out, we had never actually we had like song ideas, but we had never actually been able first off to get exposure to somebody like Leon and John, and even you because you you were you you were uh, Leon is the one who introduced me to you, right? So, like, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have had any meat in the sandwich. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't have had any of that exposure, or anything, right? And it, it was honestly yeah. a great experience. Quit using That's that really word cool. "exposed" in us, all right? <laughs> like the word "exposed." <laughs> oh, Usually, another word. <laughs> Again, it is twenty twenty. <laughs> What's your other question, mate? If you didn't, if you didn't sing, I think I know the answer to this one already, but. If you didn't sing, what instrument would you be playing right now? Can I? Do I have to be able to play it, or can I just like an instrument that I'd like to play? Fantasy it? instrument. Anything. Tuba. Anything. Tuba. Uh, I would probably be a worldwide phenomenon at xylophone. Xylophone. <laughs> <laughs> like holding like ten <laughs> sticks. <laughs> They're incredible. Have you ever seen those guys go off? A real xylophones, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. My yeah. school had one; it was freaking massive. Yeah, they're pretty cool. They're pretty cool. I, I thought like I thought you were gonna say I thought you were gonna say drums. Well, I play drums. I played drums my yeah. whole life. So do you now? Because um, you know, it would just so happen there, Leon, that we have a clip of you playing drums with uh, Nick. <laughs> Vic, oh, can really? we run that clip right now? Love it, dude. And, and that was killer. Say, I know what you're gonna say. Do I own any other shirts? The answer is no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I knew. I said before I came on today. I bet. I bet any amount of money, uh, Leon's wearing that Iron Maiden shirt. Should have oh, been yeah, your third man. question. <laughs> Actually, that that's true. But that was another good one. Me and Dad got to see Iron Maiden in Berlin. That was a ripper. So okay, so you have three great moments. Yeah, there, the, that's the yeah. trifecta right there. Oh man. But, that was a great, you know what? Playing that double kick, because I saw it was a double kick pedal. You had a, you had a, a double kick mm-hmm. pedal. I was like going, man, you're really busy on that. I thought you were almost like Leonard Hayes from YNT with the foot. Yeah, no, but no, it was a double kick pedal, Glenn Sobel style. I like it. It was good. Yeah. How, how was your foot after that one? Oh, yeah, it was pretty sore. And I probably had about <laughs> 20 Bs. <laughs> yeah, that was that was that was the same that was the same day I figured out uh Leon had a hairy back and also where he lived because I had to drive him, him and my dad <laughs> over to his place. Uh, absolutely you know what? We gotta love way. gotta love our producer, Vic. That was good. That was classic. <laughs> Team. Was that Rob oh, thanks, Lowe or was that uh was that that was Rob Lowe, I think. Or was if it was you, then you should be an actor. That's that's definitely me in the morning. <laughs> well hey man nick thank you for coming on and uh sort of like taking over and fucking being a <laughs> highlight of the show because yeah. honestly i'm gonna the takeaway from this thing is like sticks and stones and leon's hairy back which reminds <laughs> me of uh, one other joke though because you were talking about instruments if you could play anything and you said tuba uh oh, i said cool- xylophone Xylophone. xylophone. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, you could be a xylophone. I'll, I'll say tuba. It's, it's what is, you know, what is the definition of an optimist? And it is a tuba player with a beeper. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> I didn't expect the kid to get it, but maybe a you. Tuba, a tuba player with a beat? I don't, I don't think I ever thought that. Is that a you know what a, What's a beat? You know what a, don't you know what a beeper is? Oh my, are you too young? Holy crap. Somebody in the chat help me out. Uh, I mean, Vic, are you are you not you don't even oh, know is beep? that like when you beep? It's no uh, okay. In the eighties, in the nineteen eighties, maybe nineties, you used to use it to call your drug dealer and it would, oh. <laughs> it would just basically beep up. Officer Burkholder knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, she's like going, Of course, everybody has a beeper, every drug dealer has a beeper. What are you doing? There she is, Officer B, right now. What's hey, happening, man? Hey, hey, hey been, what's up? Yeah, we couldn't get beepers in high school. They were illegal. There you go. There you go. I thought you were making drug deals. Nah, hey, at least that's weed what it and is. is legal now. Wow. <laughs> you don't need a beeper for that. You just go to the shop. <laughs> that is true. That, that, that's completely changed since our generation. I'm going to yeah. get under here because Officer B... Do you have a question at all for Leon? Because I know you've been sitting there patient all the time. Or did you? I, I wasn't. I wasn't expecting you to have a question, but maybe you do after all of this. Uh, no, I just want to go uh, check out the lazies after this. So I got yeah, wicked. All right. Cool. Well, there right. it is. The the, the, the <laughs> album covers on the wall. I'm going to say goodbye to both uh, Susan and to uh, Nick right now. That's the album cover of the latest uh, release. Uh, Vic, you gave him the hook without me really properly setting them off. But you know what? You know, that's what Vic does. He gives him the hook. Thank you very much, Nick. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nick. Thank you very much, Officer V, for coming on. Because we've been talking with Leon Harrison and... You know what? Officer B had a great uh, idea because it is time to sort of wrap it up a little bit. <laughs> That's what the beeper is, all right, mister? I love it. And again, if you're listening How to this. How does that relate to a tuba? Uh, is it, <laughs> the, the definition of an optimist is a tuba player with a beeper because the tuba player is waiting for a gig. He has a beeper. You know? Uh, and, okay, right. No, nah, that's just when, when I'm. When is a tuba it. player ever going to get a gig? You know what? By you not laughing at that joke, you're you're disparaging Alice Spanish. Cooper's legacy because he's the one that told me that joke. That was an oh Alice really? Joke. Oh yeah. Oh come on, man. Sorry, Alice. You don't think I would? You don't think I'd waste an opportunity to drop Alice Cooper's name in a podcast episode if I could? Do you think? Come That's on, cool. man. You should just. <laughs> You just you should just say you shred solos in his band. <laughs> That's better than a fucking tuba and a beeper. <laughs> I do my best. Yeah. I do what I'm told. I love you, Ryan. You're a good love- man. No, man. You're a good I- man. You mean a lot to me and uh, you do a lot for music. And thank you for having me today. You've been great, man. I think there's a lot of people out there. Um, you know, maybe, maybe there were not a they, a couple people like sort of maybe said, "Oh man, this is going to be a bad Wi-Fi episode. I can't handle another uh, technical difficulty episode of this." And they might have dropped off, but they'll they'll see the rebroadcast when we mm-hmm. shape it all up and we primp it all up and cut it up real nice. But uh, to be honest with you, dude, it's been one of my favorite ones, just shooting the shit and having fun, having <laughs> Thanks, a lot of laughs. Bro. You know, and I want <laughs> my people and the people that are al- already know who you are. I want you, you guys that already know who Leon is to subscribe to my stuff. But now I want all my people to subscribe to Leon's stuff. And this is where you are going to uh, say the name of your social medias and uh, how people get in touch with you and find out more about you and the lazies. Go Absolutely. Ahead. Well, obviously, you can see the handles up on the screen. Uh, obviously, the lazies is easy enough to uh, to uh, find. The Australian Dream is my personal account. You'll get all my hairy back updates. Uh, <laughs> Bandwagon Workshops has a handle on Instagram. Uh, the lazies obviously has a website. And if you do want to get in touch with, for some music mentoring, uh, bandwagonworkshops.com, and we'd be happy to help you out. I'll, I'll throw you a... <laughs> He won't stop with it. Now. <laughs> oh, it's become a thing. God, it might be your God. legacy. It can might I, be your oh. legacy. <laughs> can you just find one of Alice? Can you find one of Paul Stanley's hair back? Because he, in a, in a weird way, Paul Stanley pulls it off. You oh, know, God. it's either Paul Stanley or Andre the Giant. Those are the ones that you got to really look for because, you know, or George the Animal Steel. 
I think it wasn't Andre the Giant. Sorry, it was George the Animal Steel. He was the one that that really had a, an impressive hairy back. So it's just take- getting worse, bro. It's just getting worse with age. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Here's this is gonna this is gonna piss off Bianca. She, she's gonna watch this. She's gonna say, "I can't believe you did that." No, but what I did during this whole COVID thing, the craziest thing I ever did, all the hair down there. I let her do this thing where you, it's called fleet or flint or whatever that shit is that, that removes hair. Done. Oh, Vate. Vate, Vate. Oh, I beat, I beat it down there for the first time ever in my ent- whole entire life. And it was weird. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to tell you right now, it was, you, you try it. Try it with your back one no. time. You, you know, oh, I've done my back. I've done my back. You become a Ken doll. Like a, like an actual, you know, you have a Barbie doll and a Ken doll. It was weird, dude. I can't believe I'm, I mean, I probably looked like Nick does now. <laughs> oh my God. Sorry, Nick. Oh. Three under the bus on that one, bro. You know what? Just for that, you get to come up and say goodbye to us because you know what? I'm going to put you on there. How you doing, Nick? Everything good? Yeah, yeah everything's good. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Yeah, right. Anyways, <laughs> Thank everybody for tuning Thanks. in. I appreciate you having for having me, Ryan. I appreciate it, man. Hey, I'll see you later, Nick. Uh, have a good one. There it is. I got to give him the hook that time. But um, last <laughs> sort of question, and I don't know if you have one. It's kind of just throwing out a fucking Hail Mary pass at the end because you never know. But do you have a quote? Because do you have a certain quote that you live by? Something that maybe your pop or something you heard somewhere? Um because a couple of weeks ago, I, I wasn't even expecting it, but we were interviewing Joe Satriani and he said, uh, you need to prepare for good luck. You know, you yeah. have to prepare yourself for good luck. And I thought that was so important. Um, I have a much simpler one that's just as like I told you earlier, the practice, persistence, patience. And <laughs> I don't even know what that is. That's, not, that's a bad that's bad advice, whatever that picture was, Vic. Um, people here that are listening to it on the audio, they're like, what the fuck is going on with this episode? But uh, do you have a sort of uh, quote that you can um, – and by the way, folks, it's all grown back now, and I'm, I'm back to probably <laughs> looking a lot like Leon's back. So um, do you have a special – uh, sort of goodbye? Uh, yeah, I do, actually, and it's from a producer, Garth Richardson, who. Uh, his biggest record was the first ever Rage Against the Machine record with um, Killing in the Name, various songs. His, fa- his father was Jack Richardson and did the Guess Who, I believe, and he used to kick around with Bob Ezrin and uh, all that. I, I think he even may have done Alice Cooper. Or, yeah. I know Bob Ezrin did. But Bob I Ezrin think did Jack- all the Alice yeah. Yeah, all Jack-, Jack Richardson was right, right around it all. And anyway, so Garth. When I stayed with Garth out at Vancouver, um, he told me this story because his p- father's passed away now. But he said, Dad, I want to be like you. I want to go and uh, make records and all this sort of stuff. And he told me he had his like notepad and he was ready to take notes. And his father just looked at him and uh, got up <laughs> and uh, he looked at him and went, good songs sell, bad songs don't, and walked out. <laughs> And with that, honestly, that's the advice that you can pass the torch of rock and roll on to the next. You can say it to Nick. You can say it to any of the bands that are in uh, bandwagonworkshops.com. Yeah. Good songs sell, bad songs. And, you know. and, 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 uh, and apparently his dad left the room and Garth went, is that, is that it? And as he was walking out, all he heard was, that's it. <laughs> there you go. Dude, yeah, that's a good that's point. Great. You know what? Um, thank God we have our social media coordinator, uh, Federica, probably in the chat right now watching, and she's done a great job. That's going to be the headline right now with uh, one of your first clips that comes out. It has to be. Good songs <laughs> sell, bad songs don't. But uh, 
Thank you guys so right much for in. being patient with us. Thank you very much. Leon, you know what? We'd love to have you back on again and talk a little bit more about Bandwagon uh, as soon as it uh, develops more throughout the next coming Ooh. year and to see what happens yeah. uh, as the uh, touring opens up for the Lazies and what's next. So we'd love to have you back on. You're a That's guest of the right. show. Uh, you're a fellow person that has a lot of body hair, obviously, like I <laughs> had uh, admitted and uh, I'm sure I'm going to hear about it when I end this podcast and go eat dinner. It's going to be great dinner <laughs> I'll tell you right now. <laughs> but Vic, thank you for uh, pulling it through with all the technical difficulties that we had. I'm glad that we were able to uh, pull the show together. I'm glad everyone that was in the uh, trenches all day in the chat, uh, you hung in there. Thank you very much. Uh, we've had Leon Harrison from the Lazies, as well as uh, bandwagonworkshops.com, uh, hanging with us. Uh, Leon, if there's anything else you'd like to say, you're all about it. <laughs> no, thanks for watching, and uh, check out my band, The Lazies, and uh, bandwagonworkshops.com. Cheers. There it is. All right. My name's Ryan Roxy, and on behalf of In the Trenches, see you next time. Enjoy the ride. Trenches with Ryan Roxy.